Hey, it's JD from Link Worship. Super excited. We took a moment with Steph Green from the Hillsong Worship team in South Africa. We chatted all things creativity and songwriting. So why don't you lean in and enjoy? Yeah, so guys, if you don't know Steph, I'll say again, from Hillsong, amazing songwriter. We've been spending the day as a team actually songwriting, and it's been incredible. I literally, no word of a lie, sent him a voice note a few days ago, literally explaining like what's on the um, what's on the like the church's heart and like what's on Dylan Tess's heart, and I, t- I told him literally an hour later he had like a chorus, a bridge the whole thing, singing it on a voice note, and I was like, wow. So you know you're slightly gifted. Well, slightly. You, also, you also never know if it's going to work, but this one luckily worked. It worked. Yeah. It worked. So. Thank, thank you, Lord. It was amazing. Kind man. Kind yes. man. Yes. Yes, but Steph's, uh, he's written songs for, I don't know if you know Elevation Church, a song, a couple, yeah, I don't know if you know them. Basically, Stephen Furtick, everything Stephen knows is from Steph, which is... <laughs> No, but it's, I think we can learn a lot from you, bro, when it comes to, to writing and creativity. So we thought it would just be amazing to kind of chat about it, have a conversation. Yeah, and get to know you a little bit also. Steph, you, you have uh, a wife and you have a son. Why don't you tell us a bit about your background, when you got married, where, you, where you're brought up. Right. And we can go from there. Awesome, bro. yeah. yeah. Um, guys, it's amazing to be here. And um, hey, I hope, it, I hope it's helpful tonight in some way. And thanks to Dylan, Tess for, yeah, just saying, can you come? Amazing. And um, Dylan, of course, is next level. Tess is incredible. And um, Dylan shared at our team meetings and with our staff. And every time, you guys would know, you walk away and you're like, that was brilliant. That is good. I'm putting that one in my arsenal. So um, anyway, thank you guys. Love you guys. Um, where am I from? I'm from um, a place called Mitchell's Plain. Do you, have you got, has anyone ever been there? I know Dylan has. Gangsters Paradise. It's so bad that I say that. I shouldn't say that. But yes, it, is, it has that, uh, that, that feel. But um, yeah, I grew up in Mitchell's Plain for, for a lot of my childhood. And um, so yeah, geez, that's the roots, man. Yes, and if you ever go to Cape Town, just go visit it. There's a Hillsong Mitchell Splain. Just go and check it out. Have you been? I've been. Yes, amazing. <laughs> so good. Um, I did a wrong turn there once. <laughs> what was that? I did a wrong turn there once. <laughs> Stop. And I was very scared for a little bit. Uh, then, my word, yes. Went to yes. <laughs> you could, you could feel. Um, but uh, my wife, we met in primary school. Wow. And uh, I remember seeing her in drama classes. So we did drama together. And um, ever since, it's been drama. No, I'm joking, 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 no. But um, yeah, I remember the first day I saw it and uh, I was like, uh, that's, that's beautiful. Like, that's incredible. Thank you, Lord. And um, 10 years later, I walked into, I was in the States for seven years and walked back into um, church, Hillsong Church. And the boys, the production boys, they were like egging me on and saying, like, go and talk to that girl. And all I could see was the back of her, like, her head. I was like, okay, cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when she turned around, I was like, what the heck? Primary school. Anyway, from there, Facebook poke, Facebook poke, Facebook poke. <laughs> oh, and, um, and then this is, this is actually a crazy, this is a, this is a funny story. So, so um, I was like, hey, I need to pursue, I need to ask her to, like, you know, just come out and hang out. And then one night, I just made up a story and I said, hey, the creative team is going to watch Glee together, like all of the, do you want to join? Um, anyway, she shows up and it's just me. She's like, whoa, what's happening? Oh. Uh, anyway, the rest team. is history. Thank you, Lord. Eight years later, we are married with one kid. Thank you, Jesus. One and done. Or one and dogs. And, um, and dogs. And, Love uh, of dogs. I asked Steph, I was like, so what, what do you actually do at Hillsong? He's like, well, I'm a lover of dogs. That's right. I was like, and then you said love, what else did you say? Love people. Love people. Yeah. I do creative stuff. That's it. I was like, bro, that can't fit on a graphic. Yes, yes. 
<laughs> no, that's Too amazing. Good. But yeah, there we go. So good. That's brilliant. Yeah. Um, so obviously you you're in the songwriting space. You you kind of look you oversee creative at Hillsong at two of the campuses. I don't oversee creative. Oh, oh, for two locations. Two yes. locations. Yes. And uh, obviously there's been a journey towards that. How did you get into songwriting or discover this gift? Right, yeah. We were yeah. chatting at, is it Wonderland? Yeah, Wonderland this afternoon. Um, and I think, uh, I think we all try and find, I can't say all, but we try and find um, different ways to talk to God. And I think this was one of the ways that I found helpful. And it was writing on a page more than like verbalizing it. And I think then eventually it turned into verbalizing the page. But um, deep down, it started with a conversation with God. That's how I would say. It was conversing and eventually, I guess, you start mulling over scripture and um, you're like, how can I say this differently so someone else will understand this Bible? And you try and, I guess, dig deeper and look between the lines and dive deep and, um, and find nuances of, uh, of, I guess, bringing the tone of his voice across to someone else. Um, so, they can, so they can find, I guess, a... Uh, a common ground landscape where they feel, man, I'm at home, I understand that language and that makes my soul come alive. Now let's do this journey with, with this God. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, bro, F- first, uh, of course, um, started off with trying to rewrite other people's songs. So I tried rewriting, this is my desire to honor you. And then I, tr- I was like, let me try and rewrite that song in my own way. And then it went to like, Lord, you are good and you're mercy. And try, just try and rewrite stuff. Um, but uh, that's where the journey started, yeah. Mm. And um, what's quite wild, dude, when we were chatting in Wonderland, uh, you kind of started getting into this process. You started trying to sing and uh, you shared it with some people. Uh, at your school, and uh, basically I said you couldn't sing, <laughs> which is amazing. So my question is like, how do you deal with that discouragement? Because I think for a lot of us, we want to get into like what we feel God's got on us um, and create, yeah. and then bang, someone's like, Yo, you're not that good at singing for you. I mean, it could be something else for somebody else, but how do you deal with that like discouragement, and how do you respond to that? That's a good question, bro. Um, I'll try and answer it. <laughs> but, um, wow. Yeah, so for, for a large part of my life, I try to join the choir and be a part of this choir thing. And every year I would give it again. They would say, sorry, like, your voice isn't good enough. And I would go home and my mom would be like, yeah, it's because you have asthma. It's because you have asthma. You can't hold the notes. Um, and uh, I think it's the classic uh, David and David, um, the shepherd in the Bible, um, and him just being in the field. And I think my, I think just being faithful with the small, it was, it was a seed, man. It was, I don't even know if it was a mustard seed then, it, but it was a seed. And um, I knew something deep down was brewing and something was there. And uh, I guess once you give it some nutrients and some water and sunlight and you actually put some work into it, um, it grows and it forms. And it does it, I guess in the moment it doesn't feel like anything is going to happen. But eventually you look back and you're like, wow, this is a tree now. How did that become a tree? But it's because you were faithful with the small. And in Zephaniah it says, do not neglect small beginnings. I'm 100% for that. Small, small beginnings are the most beautiful, fertile, gorgeous thing. And though no one sees it, we, we say God sees it, and yes, he does see it. Yeah. 
And, um, and I think he puts his hand on it, and the rest is history. Mm. Yeah. And that kind of started like 12, eh, you're saying? 12 years old, my dad came home with a VHS. Anyone know what a VHS is? Yeah, 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 yeah. But he came home with this VHS from a church called Hillsong, and it was their first live album recording. And I put it in the, the, v, the video player. And somehow, I don't know, something happened. And, and just deep down, I was like, I want to do what they're doing. Yeah. And, um, and I remember coming home after school, strapping my guitar on. I would put the VHS on, and I would just jam with these guys like they are my favorite buddies um and uh i remember going through school the years and, and i even tell my teachers i'm like i don't know why i'm doing this but one day i just want to like serve the church and and do this worship thing i just knew it was a worship thing that's all i knew but i was like that's what i want to do yeah, um and uh here we are. Yeah, yeah, so good. I mean, I also just want to, I was just thinking, if you're younger and, you've, and you have this like lean towards like, and you get inspired by a certain thing, like tap into that because you, like your story and it's also my story is like, I lent into music or something I enjoyed. Right. And over time, when you're faithful with it, you'll see the fruits. Um, and I think the, the best thing you can do, I guess, is get around people who do it. 100%. And they're ahead of you in it. And yeah, just see what happens. Yeah. So eventually I went to, I heard about this school in the States. And, um, and I couldn't sing. And so I sent, you had to send in a CD back then of yourself saying like, this is what I, this is what I want to do. And, um, and singing a song, like singing a what a video of you singing a song. And I was like, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my... And my eyes were probably closed, that's right, yeah. And um, anyway, they saw something in there and they said, hey, you, you, you got a full ride. Um, and so they paid for schooling, books, living. And, um, and so, so that was that, right? And on my way there... Um, I was like, God, now you need to hook me up with a voice. Like, <laughs> apparently I don't have the singing thing down. Because when you arrived there, you had to do, they only had 20 spots and, um, for this uh, creative uh, stream. And uh, anyway, so I'm like, Lord, you have to hook me up with a voice. And anyway, sang the song on platform and they were like, yeah, you got into the 20 spots. And, and then fast forward, got signed on to EMI as a songwriter. And that's just, that's just God. That's like, no man could ever, yeah, yeah formulate that type of thing, hey. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, beautiful. Just surrendering is gorgeous. So good. I was just going to ask, like, in, your, in the process of you figuring out this, this gifting and kind of playing with it and um, just being faithful with a little, in that whole process, because you're saying like how you're watching the guys on, on the TV or whatever, and you were just jamming along, where did you get your inspiration from? Like, who is the person that you looked up to? Because I think it is important to have some kind of mentor, some kind of role model to look up to, to aspire to, not to be like, but to be like, if you know what I mean. So for you, who was that? Was it a particular Jeez. person? Was it a group of people? Who was that? Wowzers. Back, back in that time, it's probably something like, Ruben Morgan, Darlin Check. Darlin um, Check. Back then, Planet Shakers, then Ron Cannoli, and it just keeps me, Jimmy Swaggy, the Gaithers, like it just keeps um, evolving, yeah. So it wasn't only church, also a little bit of secular. Hey, um, as Dylan said, Jesus only. No, 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 no. Michael Jackson. Hey, um, <laughs> Hey, rock yeah. and roll. Inspiration everywhere, man. I, I feel like we have this God that has created the world, and in every human and in, in every sphere, there's a piece of God in it. And I feel like, even yeah, looking at the ocean, I'm like, this, like that's inspiration. Mm, sure. Goodness, I could watch those waves for, for days and just. 
And he's such a creative God that he doesn't run out. So every wave is different. There's no two same waves. Same, 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 with, same with us. Like, yeah, yeah, that one song might not work out, but guess what? There's a next song coming and there's a next wave. It's up to us if we're going to jump on that wave or not. Um, and so I try and jump on every wave Come on. that comes. So and um, I think God, God again just puts his hand on it and is like, here we go. And um, yeah, sure. inspiration. Hey, I think at the moment, one of my massive inspirations is just sitting at Jesus' feet. Amazing. Like I think 2020 took it, took it all out of us, in us, through us. And looking back, if I could choose the journey over, I would spend more time at Jesus' feet. Um, and amazing scripture that's massive with me at the moment is Psalms 25 in the Passion Translation. It says, there's a private place reserved for the lovers of God where they sit near him and receive the revelation secrets of his promises. And I'm like, I wonder if I just sat at his feet, how much revelation secrets have I missed? And I'm like, just sit there. He's got some whispers. He's got some secrets he wants to tell us. Not for us, for his people and for his, for his creation, yeah. So, yeah. That's amazing. Should we end it there? No. <laughs> that was yeah. amazing. Yeah, that was so good, bro. I think at the end of the day, like, God has got all the creative ideas. It's when we lean into him and when we spend time with him, we're going to get 100%, the yeah. ideas. We're not... He's the creator. And That's right. And we basically just vessels. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Like the first thing that's shown about this, this God biblically is that he's a creator. And guess what? He doesn't create alone. He's like, I need the Holy Spirit here, guys. And um, again, how important community is. Like, I feel like a lot of my, a lot of my best work is in community. Because you're having fun, you're enjoying each other, and we're one or two are gathered, guess what? There he is. Um, and he smiles upon it. Um, yeah. So good. Amazing. Um, and turning to like more of a team and leadership type of question, I mean, I'm sure at Hillsong, you've got a lot of guys wanting to try out. The question I'm wondering is, uh, when it comes to guys who want to be involved in a team, like what sort of like advice or encouragement would you give them for someone who's kind of joining the team, they knew they want to get involved, it's on their life. Like what advice would you give to someone who's in that kind of season? Um, what advice? Why was his trousers? Um, yeah, why was his trousers? <laughs> my son. Lego, the Lego movie, Ninjago. <laughs> That's like my life at the moment. Wow. Um, but what advice would I give them? I would say a massive, um, I would say two coffees with someone you love and enjoy. Two coffees with some, some spirit people who are in the lane that you see yourself wanting to, to walk in. Um, and then must force yourself in there. Like, I oversee the creative interns, and I'm like, like, a lot of people might not have time, but hey, just force your way in there. Like, just, if they're walking in the foyer, get in there. Get in there, girl, man. <laughs> um, and so people is a massive thing, who you spend time with. Yeah. Um, the places you hang out will affect where you're going to move into and the things that you allow in your life. Like, um, man, let's, let's check what's happening in your life, bro. Um, I think 90% is how's your heart and your character and how's your humanness? Like, are you human or are you like too spiritual for spiritualness? And so, and then 10% I'd say is the actual guitar playing and drums playing. But if that 90% is sorted, 
the rest, like, it's just, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, it helps a lot. It makes the journey yeah. easier and smoother yeah. than just being like, I'm all about my craft. I'm all, yeah. like, I'm stoked on this craft. Um, so, and then the other one I would say, what you, like, bro, let's, let's see what you're listening to, what, you, what you're looking at and staring at. Um, and the other one, what you're feeding on. Mm. Let me help you feed on the right things. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let's, let's talk about no rules, rules. Like, sure. what books are you feeding on? What podcasts are you feeding on? Yeah. What are you watching? Yeah, yeah bro. And those, that, those, are, those are big, big ones. Yeah. But um, it comes down to having a coffee. And you make the coffee happen. If they don't make it happen, you make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, say, I'm going to buy you a coffee. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and that's what, that's a, that's, yeah, I've, I found that helpful, man. I just forced my way sure. into people's worlds that I wanted to be in. Yeah. And not, not in a weird way. Like, don't be weird. Just be nice about it. Yeah. Be, be normal and human, yeah. yeah. Um, What's weird? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is weird? What is weird? <laughs> Staring at... Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Can I get your signature? No, no, no. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Amazing. Um, and what uh, if you, on the flip side of that, say you are a leader and there are a lot of leaders in this room, what do you think is the best environment we could uh, create for people to flourish in when it comes to wanting to see guys grow healthily? Um, how would you create that environment? I would, um, I think a lot like a farmer. Hey, we were talking today and I was thinking farming terminology, but I think it's creating a place where, where there's a harvest, like where there's grass that people can feed on. Um, and uh, fostering it. I think you need to foster the grass, but also um, fostering a community where people can, again, be human. Just be yourself. You don't, you don't have to come in and I'm, I've been reading Ephesians 2.20. Um, but hey, like, bro, how's your family? How's, how's your, what have you been thinking about? Like, how can we, and, and even I think from a leader's point of view, Open up. Like I found for a lot of the years, I think you, you think you, you're a leader and so you close the doors of your heart. But guess what? I think when you open up and authentic and genuine and real, man, the, like your team wants to lean in because they're seeing r- realness and authenticness. Um, and uh, if you have that, I think you have an awesome community and relationships, it's, um, it's a beautiful thing, yeah. And I've, I've seen that year already, just being here, man. It's been so beautiful, yeah. It feels like a sweet spot on a cricket bat. You remember those kookaburras with a bubble? That's what it feels like, yeah. It's like the bubble on a kookaburra cricket bat. Um, and and once, what, what happens on the kookaburra cricket bat when the ball hits that bubble you either have a six or a four. Yeah. It wasn't even hard work. But, and, that, and, and I think that this community has that. It's like just, if I can say it, that's, the that's what it is. And um, so, I just want to honor you, bro, because, I mean, I was just, like last night we, we grabbed uh, dinner and uh, the first thing you did was you hung out with the kids. Um, I know Dylan and Tess were there and it was like, they have 45 children. Yes. They have a youth group going there. Yeah, they have a little youth group. Yeah, it's One amazing. way to build a church. Yeah. Build a church. Build a church. Yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, I thought you were going to join in. Sorry, guys. Yeah. So good. But, bro, you are literally, that's your, that's the vibe. You're just all about relationship and, like, you just want to see people where they're at and it's just a beautiful thing. And, uh, and you also talk about your story and You've been able to be in rooms with guys that maybe you're like, how did I even get here? But uh, it's your relational gift, bro. And I just want to, yeah, it's just amazing. So thank yeah. you. And it's been cool That's to get special. to know you. Just having a moment here, guys. <laughs> yes. So good. 
John, any questions? Um, yeah, I, I think like um, coffee. You want I was coffee? saying Jean. Um, um, looking back at your own journey and how far you've come, and obviously you've got still so much more to give. Um, if you were to give like younger guys in the room some advice on just some things that you have learned, you know, through coming up, what would be like that one or two thing, that one thing that stands out that you should always look forward to, always do, always honor, or whatever that may be? Wow. Um, coming back to feeding, dude, I was obsessed in a holy way, like holy obsessed on the presence of God. Um, and, and I would foster it in my room. And I think because of that, I guess talking about frequencies earlier, but because of that, when, when that frequency happens, it's, it's just so easy to step into it. Um, and uh, I would say foster it in your room, like in your car. Yeah, in the car, seriously. Um, I find my best songs happen when I'm walking and talking to God. Um, and C.S. Lewis said the same, like with his writing, a lot of his stuff he couldn't finish, but once he went for a walk, and it's called jogging your brain. So your feet's walking, but you're actually jogging mentally. Um, and it allowed him to work from the head back to the heart, to the hand, and finish off the work that was ahead. Um, and so feed on the right things, man. Uh, even to this day, you can go to my YouTube and all you'll see is songwriting videos. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll do that. So making coffee this morning, press play on an, a songwriting. Pat Patterson's like the best teacher of songwriting in the world. And I just press play and make coffee and in the background just, just listening. And, and then earlier days, I'd put on the VHS. I would try and emulate what they were doing. I'm like, Let me, this is how they move. This is how they like lift their <laughs> neck when they do this. <laughs> and, and then, um, and then going back, like again, um, again, feeding on cheese, the CDs, the videos, um, the books. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't, I don't know where that came from, but um, I found it helpful. Just and looking back, like if I was talking to my son, I'd do the exact same thing. I'd be like Hunter, like. What do you want to do? Let's get into it. Yeah. And, awesome. and actually just pushing my head into it. I feel like we are worse critics. And that's why we don't step into the lane that God has for us. Wow. Um, and so we stay on the safety zone. This morning I sent something to Mandy and I said, my ponderings this morning, so we just message each other and just what we're thinking about. And I'm like, it's so weird that we choose to stay in the boat but we know there's water for us to walk on. But we're so scared of walking on the water because, hey, we might drown. But I'm like, man, maybe it's fine to drown because he can teach us how to breathe. Yeah. And, and for us, man, like, it's fine. It's fine if we're going to drown. Guess what? There's someone who can teach us how to breathe. It's so good. I mean, I want to stay on this point just... We got a few more minutes, but when it comes to like, it's like being bold in your creativity. Like, how much? Um, what is that tension like when it comes to just giving it, not knowing what's going to happen, and when it comes to being bold? And uh, like, is there a lot of uncertainty when it comes to you and your creativity, and just stepping out in uncomfortable? Moments like, do you think it's a lot to do with that? Like stepping into things that actually doesn't seem like you can do in your own strength. Is there a lot of that? Do you find in your life, even to this day, is that always the 100%. case? Hundred percent. There's such a tension. There's a tension between. Um, I just want to go for it. I think I should like. Let me just go ahead. But then there's also like this voice inside that's like, maybe in this session I should just be quiet and learn and. I, and I don't have anything to add to this session. Like, um, and I've had those. And I walk away and I'm like, Bubs, she'll ask me, like, how was, how was the songwriting? I'll be like, it was awful. Like, 
I don't want to do that again. Yeah. Like, and uh, I'm like, no, I shouldn't be doing this. Like, this is the voices that's happening. But then on the other side of the equation, you have like Colossians 2 that says, don't quit. Get on with the job. You have all you need. You have plenty room. And so deep down, I also say, actually, I have everything I need. We wrote a song, You Are More Than Enough for the Father's Heart. Yeah. Wait, what's it called? Th- this is our Father. This that's is our, our Father. That's, that's our, our Father. father. Yeah, it's a giddy, it's a giddy. So we wrote, that's our Father. And, um, and I think while, even while we were writing it, I said like, man, I struggle with this stuff. Like, we have this father that says he's enough, but do I tap into that enoughness? I don't think enough times. I, 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 I don't step into it. And so let me read that scripture just so you can, it's a scripture that's helped me massively, guys. Colossians 2, 6, and it says, my counsel for you is simple and straightforward. Just go ahead with what you've been given. You receive Christ Jesus, the master, now live him. You're deeply rooted in him. You're well constructed upon him. You know your way around the faith. Now do what you've been taught. I feel like that's the way God's like talking to me sometimes. And then this, this is my favorite. School's out, quit studying the subject and start living it and let your living spill over into thanksgiving. And sometimes that just shoots the holy spirit adrenaline in my bones and I'm like, let's go, yeah. let's do it. And so I hope that, uh, yeah, I hope that can help you, man. That's yeah. so good. Because I think on this church, there's definitely a sense of God wants to do something through our creatives. Yeah. And there has to be- Get a, on with come it. On, go ahead. <laughs> Quit studying this. No, yeah, I say this to my team. I say this to my team also, like, let's just quit studying the stuff. We have this stuff. We need to have confidence to let it overflow. Yeah. But no, we don't want to overflow because we're too scared what they're going to think. Yeah. But guess what? Don't, don't overthink what they're going to think. Yeah. He's fine with it. Yeah. He's happy with it. He's smiling over it. And so, oh, yeah. Guys, yeah. Come on. So Awaken the creative. Let's go. Yeah. Let's write a hundred yeah. songs. And if one gets seen or heard, it's, that's fine. Just keep going. At the end of the day, it's not about getting heard. Even if the yeah. one doesn't get heard, it was a conversation between you and God, and that's the most important thing. Brilliant. That's what I say, like, with my wife and we'll chat, and I'm like, like, as long as it was just a conversation that we had with God today, and there was a dialogue between the two of us or the f- four of us, mm. so be it. Mm. Yeah. That's so good. How good is this being, guys? <laughs> no, no, yeah been amazing. I wanted to open it up if because it's quite a neat little crowd. Yeah. It's just great. Um, are there any questions you might want to ask Steph? We'll do two questions. Um, and then Steph will be amazing if you could pray for us, bro. Love it, yeah. Yeah, and then we can. Is it, be, before we, yeah. be, maybe they can have time to jog their brain and think. But um, there's something that I keep close to me and this ancient biblical text. And uh, I want to encourage myself, but encourage you guys also, that what you have in you is special. You might think it's, it's just another thing. Actually, it's not just another thing, it's the thing. And the world needs it. Your world needs it, yeah, Link needs it. Um, and so it says this, ancient Bible text. All these people are skilled with their hands, each of them an expert at his own craft. Without such people, there would be no cities. No one would ever live or visit there without their services. These people are not sought out to serve on the public councils. They do not serve as judges and do not understand legal matters. But the work they do holds the world together. Mm. When they do their work, it is the same as offering a prayer. And that makes me like, man, this work, this, this thing we get to do, create, uh, fostering creativity so that others can know the creator, pour it out, pour it out. Yeah. That's 
That's amazing. Yeah, Ancient Bible by Ben Siroch. Yeah. So good. Beautiful. Any questions you might have? Doesn't have to be around songwriting. Yes, Josh. I'll run the mic, bro. Are we running mics? Are we running mics? <laughs> you run the mic. Yes, John. <laughs> I'm Jackie. <clears throat> um, how do you find your, like, how do you not let yourself get distracted when, when doing something? Like, you want, you know you want to pursue it, but then, like, you get distracted and you're like, oh, I want to do this. And I'm like, oh, no. And you, like, you, like, lose the train of thought, in, like, in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Very good question. Good question. And I've been ruthless with this at the moment and um, YouTube. <laughs> but um, how do you, the, the best way that I find helpful from research is um, your environment, how you structure and strategize your environment around you changes what's going to happen in that moment. Massive part, flight mode. Right? That is brilliant. If you if you need to be, if you know you need to be taking pulls every day, guess what? Put it at a place where it's like in your walkway. Um, another one is having a calendar where you can actually visually see it and mark it off. I wrote today. I wrote today. I wrote today. I didn't just start a song, but I finished the song. A visual reminder has helped me a lot. Um, yeah, bro. That's, that's three things that has helped me recently in the distraction zone and getting out of it. It's, it's a real thing. It is a real thing. Um, and I think the dirty devil would love to keep us distracted. If he can keep his sons and daughters distracted for long enough, guess what? We're going to miss bullseye. And um, if we miss bullseye, I was talking to Mans about this. I said, I feel like sometimes... We're not hitting bullseye. And I said, if you're not hitting bullseye, you're actually hitting, you're hitting something else. And whatever you're hitting is not good. And it's not what God wanted. And so um, getting, getting that eye trained and just hitting that bullseye, yeah, helps a lot. Amazing. So good. What a true God worship is, arrows pointed at God's bullseye. How do you find that bullseye? Spending time with God. Pretty I have sure. a question for you guys, if that's all right. What do you, f- and I, I asked Ash this and JD, but what do you feel like your immediate family as Link creatively needs from you as prophetic creatives? Because you're not only creating for the now, you need to create art that allows the pathway for these guys. You, you actually doing this. You're going, I know where we're going. Hey, guys, come along. Let's go. And what do you think it is that they need? Because you know you want to take them there. That's the sweet spot. What do you guys think that is? I think you, you guys, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. We, we were talking, and the, but it would be awesome to hear from even you guys if you've ever thought that way. But because back in the D, biblically, the Levites were sent out first before they could take over the land. And I think there's territory for you guys to take, but the te- you guys taking the territory is determined by you, the creatives. Because he sent the Levites, and that was the creatives, the, the singers, the artists, the poets. And I look at that bro that created that, insta- that, that video. Goodness the, gracious, beautiful. You, That's beautiful prophetic human. stuff, bro, wherever you are. Yeah. So good. Great voiceover. Bro, I, I, I think it's amazing. I'm not going to answer that question. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, it would be awesome. Seriously. This, I, I would say there's no wrong answer. I would love to know because it helps to create language for what's, what's to come. I think you hit the nail on the head. Oh, sorry. I think you, 
you hit it spot on. You know, in the Bible, they send people out before. So we've got to have gone there in our personal capacities before we think we can take people along with us. Like, we can't bring people along if we've never been there before. So I think even from a worship perspective, I can't take people along to a place I've never been before. I need to feel comfortable and confident in where I'm going, then people will follow and they'll come with me. This is crazy. I've taken a... I've taken rims to places I've never been, but it's because I'm not the worship leader, the Holy Spirit is. So I'm, I'm actually waiting for him to move in. I'm like, oh, bro, show me where we're going, let's, let, let's go. And um, yeah, that, that's saying, I'm always like, mm, I don't know, I don't know. But I think we can, take, we can take people and rims to places we haven't been because of the Holy Spirit. And so, that's Especially because the Holy Spirit, technically, he's, he's ahead. And we, I'm like, I, I want to tap into that. Yeah. And it does feel scary. I know uh, Brian Johnson says sometimes it feels like he's doing this. He's like, oh, no, I'm sinking, I'm sinking, come back out. Okay, let's go, yeah. But, um, and sometimes it tanks. But you've got to be fine with the tank because eventually you're going to find the terrain that's going to allow your feet to walk. And when you find that terrain, oh my word, it's beautiful. That's brilliant. Um, I just think, you got a question? Yeah. Yeah. Five yeah, yeah. Um, I got you, I got you. Um, five minutes. I, yeah, definitely not five minutes. I just wanted to find out, have you ever had a season where there was just, felt like there was no creativity? So you're showing up, you're doing what you know to be true, yeah. but it's just <laughs> terrible. Mm. And... Um, what did, were there things that you did to pull you out of that space? Because sometimes life can just get messy yeah. while circumstances are difficult and yeah. that does affect our creativity. Yeah. So are there things that you did that pulled you out of that space or did you just wait for your circumstances to right. change? She's man. Oh, yeah. Um, my, wife, my wife were talking to you. She was talking to you guys today, but we had a season eight years of migraines every single day. She was out, like, I'm telling you, I had to black curtains, black out the room, um, and uh, it was tough. It was puking. It was, it was just heavy. Then we had a year of bronchitis, sinusitis, laryngitis. She went through it. I went through it. Um, and looking back, in those moments I couldn't create but now, now I understand that those moments were so important. Um, it's like a photographer in a dark room. Like the dark room is so important for the, for the full picture to come to being. Because if, if the photo is not in the dark room, it gets messed up. And I found that some of the, some of the toughest seasons and darkest seasons has been the most fruitful seasons. Um, and recently studying volcanoes. And a volcano, a volcano can destroy stuff. But guess what? It also creates stuff. And so I've learned to come to terms that a bad season is a good friend. Um, because what it's going to create is going to be beautiful. You look at, there's this amazing scripture in, um, in Ephesians. I was trying to get it today, but just, so it talks about broken vessels. And think of this, like, if I, if I, break, if I break a vessel, right, what happens? There's pieces and it smashes. But think about those pieces. This can reflect just one piece of God. But when it's broken, how many more pieces can reflect God? Like there's like a thousand broken pieces, but now the shards of light is incredible. But I feel like those bad seasons and tough seasons that feel like, like the weeping is just going on for, for longer than you thought it was going to go on is stunning. It's stunning, man. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, yeah, so, so that's, that's what, I, what, did, what else did I do in those bad seasons and helpful? I saw a psychologist. 
I, I just had to be, I'm like, man, I have, I have stuff that I've never spoken about and a psychologist is incredible. They just allow for, they allow for deep healing. I was saying, you can either cover up a scab or you can open the wound, clean it out properly and then allow the scab to grow. And guess what? You don't have to go back to that thing ever again. Mm. And so that's what a psychologist has been to me, like cleaning out the wound and creating beautiful, holistic healing yeah. and spiritual healing, mental healing, physical healing. Because we are, you know, three triune beings, spiritual, mental, and uh, physical, yeah. That's amazing. I guess you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. I just think, um, yeah, don't be ashamed of your brokenness because God, God can use that and it can change people's lives, right. which is incredible. Yeah. Steph, thank you so much. Lovely, bro. bro. Thank, thank you so you. much for, yeah, one of you. Thanks, guys. Brilliant. Could you pray for us, bro? And then, yeah. and then we've got s'mores or schmores. Schmores. I was wondering why no one ate the schmores. <laughs> and then they said it's for afterwards. Um, and so. You can smell the fire burning. Lovely. Guys, amazing scripture, and this is for you guys prophetically. 2 Timothy 2, it says, In a well-finished kitchen, they are not only crystal goblets and silver platters, but waste cans and compost buckets, some containers used to serve fine meals, others to take out the garbage. Link Creative is the kind of container God can use to present any and every kind of gift to his guests for their blessing. And I think that um, you guys have gifts, yeah, man, to, to bless others, to bring a blessing, to bring what the Father wants to bring to them. It's gonna come through you um, and come through, through us. So Lord, we're sorry for where, we, where we've done stuff in our own strength and in our own flesh. We're sorry for thinking that our craft was more important than spending time with you. We're sorry for singing songs that we didn't mean. We're sorry for, for making a platform and an event bigger than a moment with your Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And um, we pray that you truly just pull your, pull your creatives closer Whisper to them, whisper secrets, heaven's secrets, heaven's treasures. And we pray that you truly uh, put a holy hunger in their bones and in their souls that cannot be satisfied by this tangible kingdom, but can only be satisfied in your presence. And... Uh, we thank you for every family represented here, for, for every marriage. We thank you for the, for the brokenness that you're walking us through. Because at the end of the tunnel, there is light. And so we thank you for the shards and the pieces that we are feeling now. Because at the end of the day, you work masterpieces with broken things, oh God. And so um, we come back to you, we offer what we have. It may not be much, but with you on it, it's totally fine, it's totally beautiful. And all we wanna do as a Link Creative is put a smile on your face and walk out this building or walk at home and Papa says, well done my son, well done my daughter. Thank you for who you are, thank you for what you're doing. And so um, God, Holy Spirit, be close to us. We don't want to wander anymore. We don't want to wander off track anymore. No longer, no longer, Lord. And um, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you're a good father. You're not a bad father. You're not a far father. You're a close father. And um, we commit this team into your hands. May they be the kind of team and containers that can deliver heaven's secrets to your church and to your bride. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen, so Amen. Good. Amen.
What an amazing conversation with Steph Green. I really hope you took something from that. Hey, and if you haven't already, why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can find more of our content. Have a good one.